Good morning, everyone. You're tuning in to Levy Park On Demand Family Storytime and Craft, featuring Oh My, Oh My, A Butterfly by Dr. Seuss. I'm the cat in the hat. If you look in the sky, you might see a butterfly fluttering by. They are colorful insects whose lives you will see are very exciting. Come on, follow me. Right here in your yard, if you look, you might spot a butterfly egg. It's a little round dot. It sticks to a leaf, rain won't wash it away. Right here on this leaf is where it wants to stay. You may think in these eggs there are small butterflies, but wait till the day they hatch and you'll get a surprise. Caterpillars hatch out of a butterfly eggs. They look like small worms and may have 16 legs. They start chewing and growing and growing and chewing. And that's about all that they spend their time doing. They eat first their eggshells, then it's leaves that they need. They eat all the time and they grow with great speed. This caterpillar has grown too big for its skin. It needs bigger skin than the skin it's been in. So it takes a deep breath, then it wobbles and wiggles. It's a, its skin starts to spit as it joggles and jiggles. The old skin falls off and right there underneath a new bigger skin that's been hiding beneath. It eats the old skin. Oh yum, how delicious. Protein in the skin makes it very nutritious. After the fourth time, it sheds all its skin. The next stage of a butterfly's life will begin. It hangs upside down like a small letter J and for a few hours, it hangs there that way. Then it changes again. The next stage is this, a shell forms around it called a chrysalis. Inside the chrysalis, the caterpillar keeps changing all of its body parts and rearranging. For almost 10 days, it can't move and can't eat. Then one day, the butterfly's change is complete. A tiny back leg begins to poke through. Within seconds, another leg pops into view. She bursts into the air, a bright new butterfly. Her wings are so soft that at first she can't fly. She must wait till they harden and till then she must stay. If an enemy comes, she cannot fly away. Her antennas start working to sense what's around her, the motions, the smells, and the sights that surround her. In hours, her new wings get harder, and so she is ready to fly. She is ready to go. See these two caterpillars? They're different. Here's why. One will soon be a moth, one a bright butterfly. One makes a chrysalis, and now we know, inside it, a butterfly is starting to grow. One spins a cocoon, like a blanket, to hide it, and then a new moth begins growing inside it. Spiders, frogs, beetles, birds, lizards, and mice think bright butterflies for a snack are quite nice. Every butterfly knows birds are trying to catch it. It's a wobbly flight, makes it harder to snatch it. Butterflies are so light, this will show you how many. You will need just to equal the weight of a penny. They see thousands of pictures. If one looked at me, here is a drawing of what it would see. We have a new hobby we just started trying. It's fun and it's fine, and it's called butterflying. We look to find butterflies. They're everywhere, in our yard, near a stream, on the ground, in the air. We write down the day and the time that we saw them. We write down the place, then we take crayons and draw them. When you find butterflies, there are ways you can see by the size, shape, and color, what kind they might be. Butterflies get their names from all different things. Swallowtail butterflies have long tails on their wings. Here's a lacewing, its wings look like lace. This owl butterfly looks like a baby owl's face. Which one is the smallest? It's this pygmy blue. A bird wing is largest, it's beautiful too. These are the monarchs, just watch them in flight. They have orange and black wings with small dots of white. They can't live in cold weather, so somehow they know they must fly where it's warmer, like to Mexico. They fly hundreds of miles, they fly hours and hours. They stop just to rest and sip nectar from flowers. Monarchs hide in a storm when the thunder is crashing. They know they're in danger when lightning is flashing. Monarchs can fly for weeks till they finally see 
in the Mexican forest, an away mill tree. They fly to the tree, then just before dark, they land and they hook their small legs in the bark. Without the sun's warmth, they are too cold for flight, so they huddle together to wait out the night. In the spring, when it's warm, monarchs lift from the trees. They flutter and swoop, and they dance in the breeze. Now that it's warmer, these butterflies know they must mate and lay eggs so new babies can grow. Once a female has mated, it's hard to go on. She will not live much longer, her time's almost gone. She is carrying eggs, they are heavy, that's why. She cannot get back home, it is too far to fly. So she searches for leaves and lays eggs one by one. She lays hundreds of eggs and won't stop till she's done. Butterflies are surprising and beautiful things as they soar through the air on their bright colored wings. They're like jewels in the sun, they live just a short while. But whenever you see one, you can't help but smile. For you know on a leaf, if you look, you may find an egg that a butterfly just left behind. And in the eggs, small as the head of a pen, a new butterfly life is about to begin. For today's craft, we're going to be doing a coffee filter butterfly. It's super cute. You can be as creative as you want with it. Um, the materials that you're going to need for it is going to be one coffee filter. You can try to do it also with just a piece of white paper that's cut into a circle. Um, you're going to need some markers. I chose blue, purple, and pink because I love those colors, but you're welcome to use any colors that you love. And you can be as creative as you want with that. I'm using three. You could use two. You could use one or you could use 10. So it completely depends on what you wanna do. Um, we need also a clothespin for this craft, and then we need some water and either a napkin or a paper towel. So to go ahead and get started, the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to color our coffee filter. So I like rainbows, so I think what I'm gonna do is kinda of color a rainbow here. I chose my favorite three colors, so this is gonna be a personalized Lindsay rainbow. So I'm gonna start off with some purple there, and then I'm gonna do blue after that. And I'm gonna go ahead and make ra my rainbow with similar sized bands. However, like I said, you can color whatever you want. You don't have to color a rainbow. You can make dots or you can do stars. Just make it as creative as you want. You could even draw a picture. You could draw a picture of your dog, your cat, so I'm gonna do a half rainbow here, and then I'm just gonna do some stars. I think I'm gonna do some stars down here, all the way across the coffee filter in the different colors that I have. So you can see that I'm really just trying to fill the coffee filler up, the coffee filter up with a lot of color here, because that's gonna be important for our next step. All right, so the next step we wanna do is we wanna kinda, and I did get a little color on the table, so might be best if you put your napkin down first. So I'm gonna put it on top of the napkin, and I'm gonna take my water here, and I'm just gonna kinda get a little bit in my hand, and I'm gonna spray it on my coffee filter. And we just wanna get a little bit, and we can kinda pat it around just like this. If you have a spray bottle at home, that would work really, really well, and that would really get the color kinda all mixed together. That's actually gonna work the best. However, I don't have that, so I'm just kinda using my hand and just doing a little bit of of water kind of throughout. And you kind of just want to mix that color up. There we go. So, and kind of soak that up just a little bit. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to kind of pat it because mine, I really want to have a lot of fun colors on. So I started with that rainbow and stars, but it's going to really be a pretty multicolored coffee filter. Great. So there we go. There's my coffee filter. And I'll go ahead and show you how that turned out. So it's a little bit of a tie-dye look there. Um, you can go for whatever you want. If you'd like the, the design to be more um, clear, then you can just use a little bit less water there. Great. Okay, so now what we're gonna do while that's drying just a little bit is we are going to, um, we're going to go ahead and just draw a little face and some pattern on our clothespin. So our clothespin, from you can see from the craft that's done, is gonna be our little butterfly. So we wanna just draw a little bit of a face on that um, to go ahead and show you how that looks. So I'm gonna do some pink eyes because I really like the color pink and I'm gonna give mine a little bit of eyelashes because what is a butterfly without eyelashes? 
I actually don't know if butterflies truly have eyelashes. However, mine will. And then I'm gonna give mine some little lips too, you know? This is gonna be a, this is gonna be a cute little, uh, cute little butterfly there. All right, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give mine some little spots. I'm gonna give them some little spots all over like the, what would be the body portion of my butterfly. Just like this. And then by that point, your coffee filter might still be a little bit damp. As you can see, I made a little bit of a mess with my hand. Um, but you can go ahead and take this and you're gonna take the coffee filter from both sides here and you're gonna kind of scrunch it up like this. And as you can see, I've, I scrunched it up in the middle and I've got two wings here with the color on them. And then you're just gonna take the clothespin and you're gonna, whoop, mine's upside down. This way. There we go. So then I've got my butterfly. How are y'all's butterflies turning out? What colors did y'all use? We'd love to hear, we'd love to see your butterflies. We'd love to see the colors that you use and the uniqueness that you put into your craft. Go ahead and comment below or post a picture on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter and tag us, hashtag Levy Park Houston or at Levy Park Houston. Um, and be sure to catch all of the fun other things that we have. They'll be listed on our website, levyparkhouston.org. Lastly, if you'd like to donate to our free programming, please, please go to our website, levyparkhouston.org, and you can donate there. Thanks so much.